Hello, everyone. Welcome to this session on Power BI Data Marts. We'll look through the what's the house and the whys in this session. We only have 20 minutes, so all the questions, please um, leave them to the end. If we have time, if not, you can come up and talk to me after the session as well. Um, and I know it's after lunch, so we need to like energize this. I need to like try and like keep your attention here, and I will do my best to do that. We'll see how that goes. Before we dig into the exciting stuff, ah, the boring stuff, who am I? Well, uh, my name is Marte Moingen. I'm from Norway. Um, I'm a managing data analyst at Supra Stereo. And I'm organizing Data Saturday Oslo in Norway. So if you're coming to Norway in September, join, join us on that. Uh, and I'm also part of the uh, board for um, Microsoft Data Platform User Group Norway. Whew, cool. Love all things data. Obviously, Power BI is my favorite topic. And when I'm not geeking, I like to be outdoors, do some trad climbing, skiing. So if you ever come to Norway to do that, let me know. We can climb together. Cool. That's also uh, why my blog is called Data Ascend, because we're ascending all these mountains, you know, and all this data. OK, cool. Back to the interesting part. Power BI data mods, what, how, and why? We're going to quickly dig into the what, uh, do a bit of an introduction. So Power BI Data Marts, for me, you can think of it as a modeling tool that you have online, kind of cool. Uh, and what you're getting is a fully managed relational Azure SQL database that's working behind the scenes for you. But where does this fit in into all the other objects that you might be used to working with in Power BI? Well, um, you can, with data marts, you can pull in a lot of different sources, multiple sources. You pull that into your data mart, and then a data set is automatically generated for you, and then you can build multiple Power BI reports on top of that as well. And another thing that's also happening is because this is an Azure SQL database, you're also getting the SQL endpoint uh, from your data mart as well. Okay. So that was the really quick introduction on what, what is this? But I think we need to look into the how. How can we set this up? How does this work? And that will also probably really well explain what the data marts uh, actually is. Okay, so let's see if I can switch screens here. Yes, amazing. Okay, this is Power BI service. Data marts are happening inside Power BI service, so we're online and we need to go to the workspaces to work with data marts. So we'll do that, we go into the SQL workspace that I've set up for us. This is a premium workspace, that's why we have this diamond up here, and you need that to work with data marts. And if you click new here, there's a bunch of different things you can create, and we are gonna create a data mart. So I'll click on that. And then Power BI Service is gonna create a data mart for us. And since it's in preview, you know, anything can happen today. Maybe it will not work for the next 20 minutes, maybe. So if you, you can feel the adrenaline here, this is really exciting stuff. Um, but yeah, the first thing that's happening is that Power BI Service is setting up the data mart um, and our SQL uh, instance. Um, and after that, you're gonna get asked, okay, what do you want to do now? What, how do you want to pull in that data? Um, so, Yes, it's working, perfect. You can pull in SQL Server, you can pull in Excel, but you can also pull in data flows that you've already created. So you can build on top of existing data flows, which is kind of nice. Um, if you click here, you can choose to get data from another source. And this is the view that if you have been working with data flows, you've seen this before, there's a bunch of different sources we can choose from. But today, we're gonna choose Excel because this is a 20 minute demo. So you know we need to make sure that this hopefully will work. Obviously, of course, I'm going to choose some sales data, pull that in for us, and I click Next. Um, and then again, Power BI Service is going to uh, do some thinking, pull that data in for us, and we get the options on what tables or what data do we want to pull in from that source. So I'm going to choose these five tables. And as you might have seen working with, well, Power Query in general, you see the preview of the data that you are pulling in. Cool. We'll click Transform, um, and then, whoa, amazing. You have Power Query, which I'm also guessing most of you have seen before in Power BI Desktop. So this is more or less the exact same thing. You can change um, 
new changes. Let's change the name of data dimension. We can uh, add columns. So let's add a column from example. If you haven't used this feature before, it's kind of cool because you can write in um, some pattern that you wanted to pick up from existing uh, columns and then it's going to guess the rest for you. So here, let's say we want to add 2020 as a year. I just click enter and then it's, and it's, it already understood that, oh, you want year. And it even gave me the name. Cool. Nice. I click OK. And there's one thing I also have to fix here because I know there is a bug in this data set. That's this one. We're having some challenges with some duplicates. We don't want that. So we'll go to home and then we will remove rows and remove duplicates. Cool. And then as you have in Power BI desktop in Power Query, you see the steps um, on the right side here. Cool. Let's say we've done all the transformations. We're happy with this. This is now perfect. We'll click save. And now Power BI service is going to pull this data into our data mart. Yeah, load it, set up the relationship, wrap things up. And if we're lucky, it's only going to take a couple of seconds because my data set is not that big. So, ah, uh, this is promising, really nice. Yay, perfect. Okay, now we have our data mod set up. You see the tables over here. These are the ones that we just pulled in with the changes that we made in Power Query. Now, there's a lot of different things we can do in data mart. So we'll go through them kind of quickly. Um, but start out with the model view over here. So you have a data view, a query, query view, and then a model view. Oh, you might not even see it because it's so low. But if I click on the model view right here, you see something that's probably kind of familiar from, uh, from Power BI Desktop. This is really tiny, so let's zoom in a bit. Um, but here you have, well, the same view as you would have in Power BI Desktop on the modeling view. So now we can start um, setting up relationships. So let's do that. Um, yeah, so let's do drag and drop as you would in Power BI Desktop. It's going to ask you, okay, do you want to create this relationship? I do, so I'll click confirm. And then we can do that for all the dimension tables and our fact table. And, well, maybe I zoomed in a bit too much for my own good here. Market, firm. And then let's also pull in our beautiful data mention um, as well um, here. Cool. So now we have, yay, something that you've probably seen in Power BI Desktop. We have uh, set up our star schema. And we're doing this online in Power, uh, in line in Power BI service. And probably if you were at the keynote, you've seen that, wow, cool, you can do that other places now as well. Um, but uh, until recently, this was the only place you could do that um, in, in uh, Power BI service. Kind of cool. Okay, so you can set up relationships. What else can you do? You can also um, create uh, measures. So if I mark, for instance, the sales table, and then I click new measure, we're gonna get the view that you also would have in Power BI Desktop. So you could create a measure. Uh, let's do, probably not gonna write all of this correctly, but you know, that's fine. Um, let's uh, summarize the sales value with the order quantity. Cool. And then you will get a measure as you would, um, yeah, the same way as you would in Power BI Desktop. And it's appearing right here um, inside the table that we uh, clicked on. So that's cool. You create measures. Then what else can you do? Well, there is a kind of cool feature, I think, um, which is called visual queries. So you can create these visual queries in Power BI Data Marts. So if I click on that, um, you get this empty view. Cool. And what you can do is that you can start drag and drop tables into this view. So now I dragged sales table into our view. And what it's doing is that it's visually querying my sales table as if I was running a SQL query. So now I'm getting all the rows and all the columns in my sales table. Nice. That's visual for me. But then I can click on this plus sign and then I can choose between multiple different transformations and aggregations or whatever I want to do with that data. So let's do um, a group by over here, cool. 
and we want to group by um, product uh, ID. Cool, let's do that. Okay. And then it's visually showing me the query steps that I'm taking, and it's also showing me the result of that query as we go along. Kind of cool. And then I can do more stuff. I can pull in other tables. So let's pull in product table. If I click on that, same thing, it's going to display as if I was querying the whole thing. And let's try and merge these. So let's merge product table using product ID with the sales tables that we now have queried. So that's the sales table that's inside Datamart. And then I'll merge that with product ID again. Click OK. And here we see the merge as well in a visual way. So it's merged this for me. Um, and we see our product table, and you see that we can now expand the sales table. And I can do that, that from the result of the query as well. So if I click here, and then I choose that I want to pull out this count, click OK. Then it's also going to show me that that was a query step that I actually did up here, and it showed me the result down here. And again, I can do more changes here. I could do count sales, or sales count, but yeah change the name, and again, it will also be uh, visible on top. Cool thing now is that I could do stuff that requires, well, some level um, of SQL uh, knowledge without knowing SQL, and that's uh, also kind of nice. So if I click view SQL here, you see this is the SQL code that is running in the background, but I didn't need to know this. I could just pull, uh, drag and drop and then get the same result. Now I could decide to edit the SQL script directly, or if I do know SQL, I can click New SQL Query, and then I can write a general query instead. So uh, let's do the same thing. If I can write really quickly from our sales table. And then sometimes it's showing you some suggestions. Of course, it's not showing me suggestions right now, but fine. Um, and then group by product ID. Let's see if this will run. Yay, it worked, amazing. So it's giving me the same result, but from a SQL query. Cool. Okay, what else can you do? Well, you can also, if you click here on Manage Roles, click on that. You see this is the same view as you have in Power BI Desktop on role level security. So you can manage that here as well, and that will then be valid for both the data mart and the Power BI data set that is automatically generated for you. Um, and then there's also one cool thing you can do. If we click here and then, oh nice, now it's not showing me that. Damn. Okay, well, <laughs> for some reason, right now it's not letting me do this, but incremental refresh exists in um, Power BI data marts. So if you, um, well, are having a better demo day than me, you can do that. Uh, <laughs> that means that you can set up, okay, do you want to just refresh your table incrementally? For instance, you can decide that I want to store the data from the last year and I only want to refresh the last three months, for instance. So you can do that and that's really good if you're having really heavy, large tables that are not that cool to work with and you don't have to pull in the entire data every time you're refreshing your source. So you can do that here as well. Nice. Okay, then I want to show you one more thing. So if I go into, um, I have a lot of data marts here, but if I go into the data mart that we created, this one, and go to settings, um, and then go to service settings, here we have the SQL endpoint. So I could then use this SQL endpoint to access my data mart from um, SSMS or any other um, SQL connection that I would like to use. So that's also nice. All right, good. How are we on time? Perfect, nice. Okay, let's go back to the presentation. Yes, it's working, nice. Okay, so what did we look at through the house? And hopefully you learned a bit of the what's. Um, but we saw that we could do transformations as you would with the data flows. Um, you can set up your relationships and build measures. Um, you had the SQL queries that you can do, both with SQL and visually, so you didn't really need to know SQL, which could be nice. Role level security, incremental refresh exists, I promise, but, uh, but I couldn't show you today. Um, and also that you had the SQL endpoint, cool. But then this is an interesting question. Why do you wanna use data marts? 
Well, there's many, or well, it's interesting because it's so new and because it's still in preview, I haven't seen anyone dare to use this in production yet. So it will be inter interesting to see how it's gonna be used. But for me right now, um, I think it's a nice tool to uh, explore the data because you have this uh, visual SQL you can do, uh, you can play around with. You of course can, of course, can also actually write the SQL code uh, directly. Um, so it's a nice way to get to know, know the data. So I like it for that. Um, and also, because this is like a little, you have a data mart in Power BI service. So you can do things that you would normally do in your data warehouse now directly in Power BI service. So if you are for some reason struggling with it, might taking some time to do the development in your data warehouse, or you just want to test your solution. You just want to see, okay, if we did these changes and these changes, these modeling things, is, is this working? You can do proofs of concept using data marts. So that is also nice. And of course, also if you need uh, your data to be accessible through a SQL endpoint, then that's also a nice place to, to, yeah, to use it. All right, amazing. I did it on time, woo! Um, thank you so much. <laughs> Paul, please provide some feedback and uh, yeah, connect with me on whatever social media works best for you. And uh, please come here and ask questions. I'm not sure if we have time for any questions now. We have four minutes. We have time, four minutes. If there are any questions, we can do that. Yes. And therefore, if you want a tabular model for fast aggregation, you'd need to create another data set downstream. Is that right? Or oh, that's a good question. A model. This, I'm thinking the data set is not really a tabular model, is it? It is all direct queries, or am I? Yeah, no, it is direct query. That might change, or I, I have no idea. Like, I'm not, I don't know this. <laughs> but right now, and it says in the documentation that because, or it has some sort of formulation because it's in preview, that it's doing direct query. So that might change in the future. But right now, you're right, that's, that's how it's set up. Yeah. Question? Yeah, it's a, it's a really, really good question. Um, because you already have data flows, so here you can pull in and do that centralization on your transformations and all of that stuff, you can do that there. Um, and now there are these extensions, so you can work in Power BI service with the relationships as well, so then wh why would you do it in the data marts? Um, but I'm thinking, or again, if you're doing, if you for, for some reason have a really heavy data warehouse development process, the data mart is a super easy self-service way to do the things that you wouldn't be able to do um, or you had to use, do in your data warehouse. So that's one thing. Um, and also, it's just, it's a nice way to, or it's probably going to be a nice way to collaborate with others as well. Because now you can have this one-stop shop where you're doing all of these things in Power BI service and everyone can access it online, which is a nice feature. So, yeah. But it will be cool to see how, how we're actually using this in production in the future. Cool. Yeah, I would like to hear your, your thoughts. Nice. One more minute, so maybe one question. Yeah? Uh, if I've got some on-premise SQL Service data, do I need an on-premise um, Oh, I think, oh, good question. I think, yeah, the answer is yes. I'm getting help over here. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> cool. Any more questions, feel free to come up um, or we can meet in the community corner. Thank you so much for joining this session.